I'm talking relationships Worth more than money No time for the fake or the phony Tweezy jump the gym It's so evident Link up with the game I'm talking relationships You good? Wonderful Alright, cool man, we back um, episode 21. 21. Relationships worth more than money. Podcast. Wow. I'm Tweezy. Who do I got to the left of me? I'm JoJo. And 21 to me sounds like a very significant number. I don't know the meaning to share right now, but I'm going to look it up. All I right. feel honored to be here right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know, JoJo, you like been super, super shy, staying away from the camera, but you always behind the camera. Very much and uh, I appreciate you for jumping on here and uh, getting down to whatever we get to. But uh, first off, um, let's talk about the family. Like, how it all started. Mom and dad. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great introduction to this podcast because from the outside, I know a lot of people think that it was a lot simpler than it was. Mm-hmm. Um. I am the product of a biracial family, and my parents got together meeting at a mailbox. So talk about divine alignment. Um, my mom grew up. She's one of 11. She's mm-hmm. actually child number four. So my grandmother was one who was pregnant for 99 months. Jeez. Just thinking about that alone, you know, the older I get, I realize... We are not normal. Like, we are really cut from a different cloth. Like, yeah. for real. My mom's from um, Charleston, South Carolina area. Pineville, specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up in a trailer. Shared a bed. Like, she she describes it as, with that many siblings, I mean, they're sitting diagonal, like, when they're sleeping at night. Yeah. Um, working in the fields. Going to school. Going to church. Um my dad grew up um, in New Jersey, and he has one sibling. Um, he has a sister, and his dad passed, I'd say, pretty young in terms of the reality that I never got to meet him. Mm-hmm. Um, Italian also. So you have the dynamic from white and black, which of course, as we know, hopefully everyone knows who's watching this at this point, that yeah. that was not a normalized thing back in the day. And still today, it's something that it may or may not, you know, have an effect on a parent. But at that time, when my parents met and my dad decided to, you know, say, I want to marry this this woman. Um, there were many people in his family who were not okay with it at that time. Right. And his mom being one specifically, my grandma. And, you know, he decided to do what a man should do when it comes to leaving your family and and creating that legacy that it is that you want for yourself and your life. And so he broke that generational curse of knowing that there was a greater calling for him than living in the limitation of I don't want to be with this person because of the color of their skin. So my parents end up getting married. Mm -hmm. Um, His, his family did not come to the wedding. Um, However, a beautiful thing bloomed from that because Mm -hmm. it was a testament to how real and true love is. Right. And Love is the only recipe or medicine for healing and mending anything. That's a, that's a fact. It really is. True love, should I say. Yeah, love True is love. True love, yeah. yes. And so, you know, my parents got married. My um, grandma, after my mom had Kendra, you know, was just like, all right, you know, I want to, you know, I want to meet you know, my granddaughter. And I, I I only know this because of certain stories that aunties and uncles tell you too. And parents yeah. tell you bits and pieces. And the older you get, the more that you learn. But I remember one of my, um, my aunts told me, she said, you know, the first time that, you know, your mom really put her foot down with the whole situation was when um, 
your dad was going to bring Kendra to go meet grandma. And she was like, you're not going without me. And so Kendra and grandma and mom and Poppy all met. And my mom and my grandma ended up being the best of friends in the whole world. Crazy how that works. It's it's a beautiful thing. And and only God can do that. Yeah. Um, but it was a beautiful and amazing thing, even just seeing years later. She passed away at 94 years old. But to be in her 90s and have a conversation with my mom just walking down the driveway, you think about how much life has gone on since then. Right. But she still remembers the significance of that choice of not allowing her to love on someone because of the color of their skin. And she literally just grabbed my mom's hand one day when they were on a walk, and she just said, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I'm so sorry that I ever treated you that way. And, you know, my mom, being the person that she is, she sees so much more than anyone's flaws. She mm-hmm. sees the humanity in people. Right. So she knew that it was only a matter of time because sometimes people who has, have hesitations about anything in life they just don't know enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you spent you spend enough time and you learn a lot and you realize that people aren't as bad as you think. Um, and so that was a beautiful thing to just see that love can can change a heart of someone, can change a generation, you know what I mean? Can change a soul. And so yeah, like that's how we all came into this world. Um on undivided terms if generational curses weren't broken, should I say. Right. But I think, to me, that I think um, without that happening, like, we wouldn't be here today. Because that's kind of like how we met. Yeah. You know what I mean? We met just, you always had love for everybody. Like, you, Kendra. I didn't meet Kels to, like, a year ago Mm -hmm. with Kadeem doing the, I'm like, man, we do got a third sister. I'm like, (laughs) like, okay, I see Kendra, I see you. Right. But, um, yeah, man, it's it's just seeing you and like you always being a life of the party, always bringing people together, um, and I can see now it all makes sense, like how it tied in from your grandma, and your mom, mm-hmm. and your and your poppy, mm-hmm. your pops. Yeah, um, he's super cool too, by the way. Yeah, super cool. Um, how was the childhood growing up with your sisters, though? Oh, that is a great because you know I got two girls. You got two. So. Listen, I'll say, I'll say this. I I love my sisters so much. I I would literally die for my sisters. Mm-hmm. Let me just say that. I love them so much. Growing up, however, comma, I think having three kids, or I think having an uneven amount of kids is just a little bit difficult. And I only say that as a third child because there was a life established before John and Michelle Dominic. Right. And that was Kendra and Kelsey. Yep. The K and the K, the Virgo and the Virgo, the yep. August 26th and the August 31st. Kelsey, a Libra. Kelsey? Yeah. Who? My sister? No, she's a Virgo. Oh, you said August 26th. I'm thinking yeah. September 26th. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm about to say it like, no. No, they're, no. they're both Virgos. So you got Virgos. two Virgos. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's this relationship of siblings and sisterhood that was established before I came into the earth. Right. And also, I was born breached. I was upside down. Mm-hmm. Okay? I was a problem from the beginning. In a good way, though. Right. Just took a lot for my parents to realize that. Um, so, they had this uh, th- this relationship. And as a younger sibling, you know, I'm growing up and I'm trying to, like, be part of it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, okay, they playing with the toys. They're doing this. They're doing that. They see Jonna come. They're like... Oh my God, we gotta go. Let's go. John is gonna come mess this up or do whatever. <laughs> Rightfully so, because I probably would. But it was it was beautiful and also difficult at the same time because I always felt like I wish there was one more. Like I wish that I had uh like another younger sibling. And it's funny because I said this growing up so much, and now that I'm older, I see why I have such yeah. a nurturing, loving spirit. And I wish that I could like you know, like gravitate or pull or mm-hmm. like, you know, love on like someone. And, um, you know, I never had that younger sibling that I wanted to just like hone on and like take uh, with me on the journey. So it was just more so of, you know, the, the younger sibling. And I had to like, I had to hold my own. And yeah. I think now that I'm older, I have 
especially in, you know, my late 20s, like early 30s now, done that because I feel a lot of motherly roles that I'm playing now for both my older sisters. Yeah. And I love every part of it. And TT roles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's beautiful to be able to like show up in a way that I can't in my own essence because I don't have my own kids yet. Mm-hmm. Yet I feel like I do. They just, I, they're not from my body and I don't have them 24 7. So right. there is absolutely a difference. But the love and care and tenderness that I that I sow into my my nieces and now my nephew, you know, is nothing other than what I would do if I had my own. Okay. Well, um, I remember uh I don't know where the, where I was, but I seen that you was uh it was a picture of you in a track. In oh a, wow. In a track outfit. I don't yeah. know where we were at. Um, when did you when did you jump into track? That's a great question too, because most people know me because I went to college for track. Mm-hmm. But really, I went to um college for track, however, comma, I grew up doing literally every non competitive <laughs> sport. I did swimming, yeah. I did golf, yeah. um, I did cheerleading, I did track. Um and you know, great experiences. Track was something that in high school, you just see everybody do it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yeah, I want I want to do that. Um, and so my sophomore year, I did try out for the track team. I made the track team, but I was doing hurdles. Mm-hmm. My neighbor at the time, Benita Mosley, she was an Olympic gold medalist in the hurdles. Wow. And so that kind of inspired me to tap into whatever that world was like. I didn't know. But I tried out and made the team for that. And, you know, I ended up sucking at that. I was not very good. Um, and then one day there was like a dual meet, which meant every event that they had in track and field, there mm-hmm. had to be at least two people to compete. Right. We only had one high jumper at that time. Shannon, shout out to Shannon. <laughs> um, she was high jumping and then they were like, you know, just go for it because I'm just, I'm a free spirit and... I'm going to always ask a question, even if the answer is no, because the yeah. worst anyone can say is no. no. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if not, on to the next one. So I tried out for track, um, did hurdles, and I got asked to compete in high jump one time. At this time, I had no idea how to go behind the bar. So they said just like jump over like scissor kick. So that's just like one leg up, one leg over. You ain't doing no arch. You ain't doing none of that. Right. Just keep it simple. Baby steps. That's how they did it back in the day when they started doing um, high jump. So I did scissor scissor jump my sophomore year of high school and ended up being really good at it at that one meet. And so that one meet, going into my junior year, they're like, you need to focus on high jumping now. So in between that summer of my sophomore year and my junior year, my friend, Virginia Hill, I will never forget because my life is so different. It's crazy how one person can change the whole trajectory of your life. Yeah. If it was not for my friend, Virginia Hill's <laughs> dad, Coach Hill, I still talk to him to this day. Um, I wouldn't have gone to Virginia Tech to do track. I wouldn't have gone to Maryland to do track. He saw something in me that I didn't see in myself that my parents didn't even know how to identify because they don't know anything about this, this right. sport. And we spent that whole summer in between sophomore year and junior year. He taught me how to high jump the right way with the J, with the going behind the back, all that. And he really was like, you're a six foot jumper. You're a six foot jumper. And you think about high jump, most girls are very tall. I'm a tall girl naturally, like on a day to day. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to that sport, I am very much not tall at all. Exactly. And so... It served me well up into, you know what I mean, a certain point. Olympics is just like crazy because those girls are like six something. And they say that you are pretty much identified as a good jumper if you can at least jump your height. Right. So I got up to jump five nine is like my record so far. Well, I'm going to say my record period because I ain't been backwards like that in a long time. Don't know if I will because. Okay. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> might, all right. it might need a massage after that. But <laughs> yeah. All right. At that time in high school, I got up to jump 5'5", five, five, which still to this day is the high school record. And I graduated over a decade ago. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Um, Damn, I'm but, old. <laughs> a decade? A decade. Shit, I just yeah. had my 20-year reunion <laughs> last year. <laughs> Ouch. Ow, it's yeah. right. It hurts. It hurts to even think about. It's crazy, though, because time fly. Time it fly. It really and, um, does. Like, you never know, like, what comes about, where where you're going. But yeah. I remember um, y'all was doing Fan Swap, you, Tim, mm-hmm. um, uh, who else? Kendra. Frank, fr- Frank the host. Shout out to Frank the host, man. Shout out Frank. Where Shout Frank out Frank, at? man. Wherever you at. No, he in Tampa, right? That's my dog, man. That that he, him, anybody that he always recommended me to, they were always good people. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing I I can vouch for Frank. Like that's if a he, blessing. Yeah, if he say, "Hey, yeah. I need you to meet him. Yeah. I need you to meet her. I need you to meet him." Yo, this dude do this. I'm like, yeah. all right, cool. But he told me about you, and he was like, "Yeah, man, she uh, she got like an Emmy or something." And mm-hmm. I was like, "What? Mm-hmm. She got an Emmy?" And she just walking around Manassas like, like a regular, like, you know what I mean? Like, Manassas is a so low key that it's some, like, super talented people there. And I'm like, Emmy? Yeah. Like, what you do? How did you get yeah. into videography, photography? These, yes. These segues are amazing. You like them, right? I was a recruiter. I love this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Marines. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know? So, I yeah. literally, I was talking to someone about this, um... Earlier this morning, I was at Farm Brewery for my parents' bike ride for their nonprofit. And someone was asking me, like, so how did like how did you get into this role like of taking photos and videos? Because like, you know, this your family is like, I was just like, no, it's actually like a lot more than that, because my parents don't do this at all. Um, It's actually very interesting. All three of us, like my sisters and I, we are. Very creative in our own ways. Yeah. However, it had to come from somewhere. You know what I mean? Um, my parents do... My mom does, like, government contracting, real estate. My dad does real estate. And then you have me doing photo video. You have Kendra doing graphics and web development. And then you have Kelsey making the most beautiful custom gowns for Fire any occasion. Gowns. And have been Fire. all over the world. All over the world. Let me just say that, Okay. Talk about just touching the surface, and she is carrying her fourth child in four years. Um, it's just very interesting because I was explaining to them that the way that I got into it was through an avenue that I no longer pursue, which is journalism. Mm-hmm. I spent six years of my life getting a degree in journalism, four years in undergrad, two years in grad school, trying to find out if this is for me or this is what I want. Right. Um, and just to learn that I don't, however, comma, I utilize the good parts of what I learned on that journey. Yeah. Um, and I, I maximized on it. So I went to school for journalism, like I said, and it wasn't until my last semester, not even just the last year, it wasn't until my last semester of grad school where I had Bethany Swain, the most amazing professor in the world, introduce me to the world of storytelling in a sense. Because storytelling is a lot different than journalism, yeah. um, especially when it's done the right way. When it's done the right way, it's a very intimate experience with whoever you're interviewing or whoever you're interviewing, if there's more than one. And... She challenged us that semester to produce a documentary on the opioid epidemic that was happening in Anne Arundel County, Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Right. Um, it was so bad at that time to the point where. What year was that? This was in twenty. This was twenty sixteen going into twenty seventeen, and it was so bad to the point where they changed the drunk driver awareness boards to overdose awareness boards, which is wow. something I wish that they would do in our county. However. This is a rich royal county, and they want everything to seem as, you know, as good as as it is. However, there's still a lot of issues that are happening mm-hmm. um, in our schools and in our cities, too. But 
So we did a year-long investigation on the opioid epidemic happening. And one of the pieces that that was produced by me and two other two other um, classmates at the time, Juan and Emmy. And it's really, really a crazy experience because we were at the same Emmy that you see nationwide that happens between all these television stations, but we're just students. Right. Um, and yeah, so that's how we won our Emmy. Um, the piece specifically that got recognized was the one where um, we talked to um, the police officer that was in the city and he just told us about what they were doing specifically. And he talked about how they are emphasizing so much so that they want to help these people to where if your friend overdosed, like if you come to me and you tell me you're not going to get in trouble. Because yeah. a lot of people, the times like they're seeing their family members and their friends die because they're too scared to say, say anything. Yeah, say anything. Yeah. yeah. And so that was an amazing effort that was made. But that's um, one of the many pieces that we produced that year. That's dope. And then like, but you winning that Emmy, is that like, was that like the start of you wanting to like do more storytelling? Or is that like something you just like, ah, I, I dabbled in that and now mm -hmm. I just want to go mm -hmm. do something else? Definitely the start of wanting to do more. However, the more has not truly happened. Like I, to this day, I can't honestly say that I've produced something that I'm proud of to that extent. Um, I produce short pieces, especially mm -hmm. with Willing Warriors, um, my parents' organization of warriors who have gone through hell and back, literally. Right. But those pieces have been like so low features. I won't feel accomplished to the point that I did in grad school until I produce multiple features on one platform. Um, so yeah, like that was a really amazing journey, amazing challenge. Um, because I didn't really know what it even took to produce something like that. But now I do. I've been in the driver's seat before. I've been in the passenger seat before. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many moving pieces and so many like moving components. And a lot of it is about being able to pull out a story from your character by making them feel comfortable, too. Yeah. There's not many people who are willing to talk about their trauma and their scars and not from their past, but from their current situation mm -hmm. too. But when you can do that, um, you not only can heal like that person in, in, in their own way, but you can heal any, you know, anyone watching or listening at the same time. Yeah, I think um, you kind of have a, a niche that you, you don't even know you have, but you have it. It's all these people out here. These are the people you can interview first. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get a YouTube. And um, I want to touch back onto your, your mom and dad's. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a, a nonprofit? Yes. Let's talk yeah. about it, man. Because, like, I seen you. I seen Kadeem. You always reaching out, asking people, hey, who wants to do this job with me? Yeah. And you tell the price. Yeah. Like, up front. And, yeah. hey, is this is for this. And this is what it is. I just need a videographer or I yeah. need a photographer. Got to be here at this time. Mm -hmm. Send me something. Yep. Let's talk about your mom and dad's nonprofit. Yeah. So my mom retired from 20 plus years in the Air Force. 20 plus years ago at this point. Shout out to the Air Force. Shout out to the Shout Air out Force. Shout out to all armed services. Shout out to all of them. Shout yeah. out to all of them. Um, so we moved here when I was in fourth grade. That's when she retired. And she's still to this day... She, she works more now than she did before this. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, she does government contracting. And I have stepped into the role of trying to, you know, be her second brain and learn that. And to be quite frank, it's it's almost like Chinese. You know, it, it's it's another language. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's another language. And I, and I try to remind myself every day when I feel stressed, got to give myself grace because it takes time. Um but she she works, you know, a nine to five. She's in the rush hour traffic in the morning and at mm -hmm. night. Um, and over 10 years ago, she just felt called driving home one day. Like, you got to do more. Yeah. Like, I want you to do more. And what was more was helping, helping wounded and ill veterans 
you know, whether those those wounds were physical wounds or mm-hmm. internal wounds. That's a lot of the things that we found, you know, since my parents started Willing Warriors. A lot of the times people with internal trauma are suffering just as great as someone with, you know, a missing leg or a missing arm. Um, it's incomparable when you experience yeah. what it's like to give up your life for your country. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that you know as yep. a That's why I got it right Marine, here. There blessed you go. and sacrificed. Yes. Because I'm blessed to be here, but I sacrificed a lot. Sacrificed family. Yeah. Um, so much. Yeah. Um, but I was able to be there for my daughters when they were both born. So that was, I think that was the, the plus for uh, all of the stuff I've been through. But yeah. yeah. That you, your mom, your dad, um, your sisters, they are always at these events. And I'm like, man, and I seen Kadeem doing them a couple of times. And I'm like, yo, this is dope. I gotta I gotta be a part of it. Cause it's 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 for us. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like I, I still have all my limbs. Yeah. But I know it's people that don't. You know what I mean? And I know it's people yeah. that 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 go through it on a daily basis. Right. So just having that out is super dope. And I think um shout out to your mom and your shout dad. Out to my- but I'm also put the link too up under yeah. while we're talking so they can people can go check that out. Yes. And um and get it, you know, get in and donate whatever they can do to be right. a part of it. So so what so what has grown over the past 10 years of my mom having that calling is they purchased a property on 32 acres of land. It was just one property and now it's grown to three different properties and it is a respite for wounded warriors. And we don't like to say wounded. They they change it to willing. willing. Yes. Because yeah. um, it was the decision that they made. Mm. Um, and we want to honor that. But it is an opportunity for them to have a home away from home. That's what they call it. Mm. Um, a vacation. All expenses paid. They have um, chefs from the White House that come and cook for them. That's dope. Every week when they come. It's amazing. Um, and then, then we have activities that they can participate in from helicopter rides to horseback riding to having, mm-hmm. you know, someone with kids just have bubbles and games and stuff. So yeah. that's dope. And um, again, this, this is just the, the world of, of Jojo. Like you, you do so much for so many people. And I always tell you like, yo, keep going, mm-hmm. keep doing it. Keep going. Let's get to, um, I always do this segment. Yeah. It's called um, yeah. gym class. So not G-Y-M, G-E-M. I do this every segment um, of each podcast episode. Gym class, what's a gym that you can give to anybody, boy or girl, male or female? Um, some gyms that can, you know, they can put in a toolbox to carry on with them. That is a great question. I think the first... And most important thing that comes to my mind that I have experienced as a gem, wish somebody told me, do not associate time with growth. Mm. I think that's one thing that has held me up in life, dating life specifically, is thinking that if I keep investing this much time into someone and if I keep giving this many chances to someone and if I keep painting these red flags yellow and green, mm-hmm. after so many months and years, they have to change, right? They have right. to be better. You would think. You would think. But it's what they do with that time yeah. that will reveal, you know what I mean, the growth or lack of, yeah. should I say, that exists in that person. Um, that is a gem, I think that will be beneficial for anyone to not just hear, but to actually digest and receive yeah. and, to, and to live with. Because it, it's really true. You teach people how to treat you. So if you allow someone after months, after years, you know what I mean, of wrongs, not saying anyone's perfect, yeah. definitely, you know, be intentional about seeing the humanity in people. However, comma, when the same pattern continues to repeat you have to be real with yourself yeah I know they're being crazy over there I already know I can food up so so don't confuse don't associate time Time with growth growth. yeah 
Don't associate time with growth. Yeah, because sometimes if if That's that is if that is the only mindset that you have when it comes to time, you will fool your own self. It's not them fooling you. Um, I, I mean, I've been in a situation where after almost five, like almost five, six years with someone, mm-hmm. thinking that you know, after we went our separate ways, not talking for X amount of months and years the rekindling was going to end in a different situation. Yeah. And so I learned very fast too, because that's just how God moves for real. When when they say what happens in the dark always comes to light. That's a fact. I mean, that, there's a reason why I have it tattooed on me because it has been shown to me over and over again how real and how true and how powerful it is. Yeah. Um, you don't have to go look for the wrongs that are done to you, it's mm-hmm. going to be revealed. It's just a matter of time. So mm. that's why I say that's probably the number one gem to date that I would share with anyone. <laughs> Don't associate time with growth. Yeah. Big gem. That might be the best gem of them all that I heard so far. I love it. But look, we got a new segment. Oh, <laughs> Tonight's conversation. Okay. Relationship debates. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Your significant other tells you that they need some time off from the relationship to refresh. Would you be open to that? Explain. Okay. That is a great question. At this point in my life, the answer is no. And I can I can definitely explain why. And I think that my answer prior to explains a lot of that. Yeah. For me, I feel like I'm very intuitive at this point in my life to where I know what I'm dealing with, whether it's through a family member or a friend or a job or a relationship. Um, so much so to even when I see the good, bad, and the ugly, I can still give you an answer of whether or not I'm in or not. And so if someone cannot look at me through that same lens yeah. and see my flaws, you know what I mean? The highs and lows of me as a being, then there's nothing for us to continue experiencing with each other. Um, so for me, my answer to that is no. Like I, I, I'm at that point in my life where I know what I want and I know that I deserve to be with someone who doesn't make me question whether or not they want to be with me. Um, the so lady yeah. snapping fingers back there. <laughs> Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> a man is on a date with a woman, and okay. she is on her phone the whole time. Oh. When the check comes, he asks for it to be split because mm-hmm. of it. Okay. Is that fair? Explain. Okay. Y'all good? Yeah, y'all good. Y'all good. They good. Yeah. So if I like how that explained because of that, Mm -hmm. I'm very intentional on what comes out of my mouth and I'm very intentional on what I'm receiving that's coming to me too. I take full account onto the things that are said to me or the things that I hear around me. Mm -hmm. I love that that explained that that's the reason why. I feel like she deserves to pick up her part of the check for that. Wholeheartedly. <laughs> you guys see, look, so I, see, look, I, I wouldn't even tell her to pick up the check, pick up the split. That's so Ooh, nice. Like that. You're I'm, so nice. I'm, I'm huh? Like, You're so down. nice. Oh, I'm not nice. You're not nice? What, what's going to happen I'm a then? Virgo. What's going to happen then? I'm dipping. I'm going to the bathroom and I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Wow. I'm out. Cause I mean, like, if okay. we on a date, like, yeah. you all on your phone, like, yeah. I can't even get conversation with you. So, like, we supposed yeah. to be on a date on, and having conversations. Understood. That's the best place to have conversations. Yeah. I eat not the movies and stuff yeah. like that. And you, you all on your phone. Okay, let me help you. Yeah, yeah. Let me help you. Yeah, I love leave. that. I love that. And don't be, please, don't be the person that I picked up. Because if I picked you up, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Uber, I love it. Uber, baby. Uber, baby. <laughs> Lift. Well deserved. Well deserved. Well you know deserved. That's I'm true. That's true. I I have this tendency to be too nice. But that's what that's why I used to be nice <sighs> as uh-huh. hell. And I used to like allow a lot of stuff. And like sometimes it's like yeah. I'm about to push 40. Yeah. Like I'm not I love that. 
Wow. One of the biggest lessons that my mom taught me is that like sometimes lessons in life are expensive. And maybe one time you were too nice in a situation like that expensive. and you swiped and you learned your lesson. And maybe it's you ordered lobster I'm- <laughs> and not chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah. Yeah. You got to go. You got to go. Last one. Okay, go ahead. You don't believe your significant other has what it takes to make the dream they're chasing. To make their dream they're chasing. Okay. Come true. Okay. It's been years of failing. Do you tell him how you feel? Explain. Gosh, that's a hard one because yeah. that one to me is very situation-based. It's Sometimes I feel like you can put your all into a dream and it really is about the environments or the opportunities that do or do not open for you mm-hmm. and what comes of that. So... I don't know. That's kind of hard because you can see someone put their all into something and the opportunities that they're getting are not allowing them to excel in the way that you know that they deserve. Yeah. Um, but then there are situations where your partner is saying, oh, I want to do this and I want to be this, but you're really not giving it your all. Right. So that that's a, that's a little bit hard for me to answer on that one because it really depends on what that person is putting into their day to day, and I'm talking mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Yeah, I, I'm talking beyond the talk. Of, it it of definitely got to be a conversation like, "Hey, let's have a cutoff date. Yeah. If you don't make it by here, yeah." Let's, and let's I think move the, the other part that's very important is if this doesn't work, then then what? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I, I remember specifically for me when it comes to to track and field, and I'm sure it's the same for any athlete or even anyone like in the military or whatever it is that you know so well, mm-hmm. you can do in your sleep almost. You have to like, if you said that you're a spiritual person, you have to love God so much that you trust it's okay for this door to close and then I'm going to move on and I'm going to be okay. And not okay, I'm going to be better than this version of me that I know now doing the only thing that it is that I know I can do. Yeah, Yeah, because I, uh, even with me, like I've been doing music for 20 years and I I was about to give it up. Mm -hmm. But I remember back back then, um, I want to say like when I was still married with Benita, it was like 08, Oh nah, I had just got back from Iraq the second time. And we had we got I got stationed here in Quantico and uh, we lived in Annandale. She bought me my first MacBook because she believed in Aww, the yeah. dream of me making beats and everything, right? Mm-hmm. And then it just got to the point where she didn't say it, but I could tell she wanted to be like, Yeah. Are you gonna stop? Yeah. yeah. But I was still in the Marines, so I still had my main job. Mm-hmm. And I had that. It's like it was. It was a hobby, but it mm-hmm. was it was something that I wanted to like learn and get better at. So then, when I got out the Marine Corps, I was working at the AOC for the government, and then I quit that and became and music became my main thing. Mm-hmm. So then, by that time, we was already going through a divorce. So it's mm-hmm. like she like the hell. She, she don't really care. Yeah, you know what I mean, but at the same time, like I respected that because she was there, like putting putting up money for me to go to the. She, I was going to events to. Beat battle against people, stuff yeah. like that. And I was still in the Marines. Yeah. And I always tell people, have your have your plan A, make sure you got a plan B that's backing the plan A. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. So if you got a job, keep that job. It don't matter yeah. if it's Wendy's or whatever. You get some income coming in so mm-hmm. you can fund. Because cause music is expensive. Yeah. Anything you do is expensive. Yeah. If you want to travel, go to these different shows. Waking up every day is expensive. Waking up every day yep. is expensive. Because I was just thinking about it. And I don't want to tell my age, but, you know, early 90s, gas was 89 cents. Mm-hmm. It's like $3.50 now. And if you're in Cali, it's like $7, $8, $6. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, you definitely have had a conversation with that, that your significant other, and definitely. Yeah. But you know that was the that was the new segment tonight's conversation. Shout out to tonight's conversation. I love that, and I and I also just want to give you your flowers too for not giving up on music. Oh no! Because look at how far that you have come. Appreciate it. You know, and 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 shout out to shout out to everyone in your past in your. 
present and in your future who yeah. is watering the seeds for you to continue yeah. excelling in it. Because I tell people all the time, you haven't lived 100% of your best like life yet. Not even. You know, at Not all. You, you you just Not touching even. the surface, touching. maybe. Yeah. Yep. So you got a lot of life to live. You got a lot of legacy to live to not mm-hmm. just through being a father, but being a producer as yeah. well, a friend. Now a podcaster. A son, a podcaster. Here we Crazy. are. Right, right. And, and you never know what that one day or that one podcast or that one beat is going to do for your life. And right. that's why you can't give up. And that's why they all, oh, I keep them. I keep them up and I go back and watch them. Yeah. And like I even go and listen to them. Just sometimes I just, like I was telling CJ, like I just listen in the car and just listen to yeah. podcasts yeah. And, and books, audio books. Because you never know. Like it'd be that, it'd be that when you least expect it. Yeah. So that's what, you know, I'm always waiting for. But as always, this is Relationships Worth More Than Money. As it always will be, and worth JoJo, way more you. than money. Thank for you for having me. Yeah.